Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 22 for September 29th, 2020. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. As always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. So Angelo Trinidad is on assignment, but pinch hitting for him tonight and leading off is John Talwar from Cypress, California. Welcome, John. We are so glad to have hey, you. Guys. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on the show again. Well, there were quite an endearing picture there. Yes. <laughs> I, I see right. it offline. I'm like, oh, gosh, I see that every week. I, I realize that we should really have portraits that we should actually have and, and really make them look stoic. But uh, this was the best from when you were a guest on our, uh, what, second show, I believe it was? Yeah, it was a great really show. Really awesome. Well, thank you for thank you for being here. My, my pleasure. Uh, batting second, Kevin Lyon, Anaheim, California. How are you doing tonight, Kevin? Doing well. Always happy to be here. And thanks, John, for joining up with us tonight. Of course, always. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Angelo is uh, out scouting uh, uh, some other teams, um, looking for some connections. No, actually, he's I know what he's scouting. He's scouting yeah, for he... beer and he's scouting for baseball cards. That's what he's out scouting. Yeah, for. That's his new passions. Definitely, we've totally enabled him. I am Michael Mondragon from Sierra Madre, California, and uh, the way I wanted to start off this show is actually we didn't get to uh, get to this last time, uh, but John actually has some very uh, cool items that I wanted him to share. Uh, and, and we're all going to kind of share a couple items that we have, some uh, baseball memorabilia. So, uh, John, let me uh, actually, uh, let me solo on you and uh, show us some of the uh, the cool uh, cards that, that you got uh, pretty recently, right? Yeah, actually, you know, as a kid uh, growing up, um, I was a baseball card hobbyist, uh, quite the enthusiast, too. I would go to card collectible shows. There was a local card shop called, uh, you know, Hall of Fame Baseball Cards, which a lot of you might be familiar with right near my house. I actually grew up in Sierra Madre. <laughs> Um, which is uh, Hall of Fame based in Arcadia. So I grew up collecting baseball cards. And then uh, recently, within the last five or six years, um, I, you know, reacquired the interest again. Uh, you know, I kind of saw over time, I lost interest around like, you know, the 90s, early 2000s. I, was, I saw like, you know, kind of diminishing uh, prices. Uh, I guess, you know, I don't know if you guys know the story behind like the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card, overprinting, yep. uh, the market was oversaturated with baseball cards at the time between all the companies that were out there. Um, but then, you know, I grew, I uh, rekindled interest uh, five or six years ago, and I decided at that time I wanted to collect, like, you know, the, the whole slew of uh, baseball Hall of Famers. Uh, so that included just, like, the Baseball Writers Association. On top of that, like, the veterans cards as well. But, you know, I focused on the Baseball Writers Associated ones in the end. Um, to this day, I'm still kind of six short of finalizing the collection. Otherwise, I have a complete... Uh, complete set but uh right now i just want to highlight a few of them that uh you know that are my fondest ones um in particular not because of the player uh i mean the players are great nonetheless but the cards themselves have like you know a story behind them uh the series may have a story behind them so i just wanted to show a couple now so one of the first ones yeah, i'm going to show you today is this uh jackie oh, robinson gosh. 1953 tops card uh so this was actually a great series um I don't know if, uh, for those familiar with the, the Topps uh, timeline as well, 1952 was the, the most famous year uh, for Topps, in particular because of the Mickey Mantle rookie card. Uh, 
Uh, but 1953, I'm actually uh, more fond of. Uh, actually, in 1991, Tops released an archive series. So even as a kid, uh, you know, actually, I, I had acquired that set. And I was just, uh, you know, it was unique at that time, even just to see that in the 90s. Because, uh, you know, it's just, uh, um, it's actually based on oil paintings versus like real mm -hmm. portraits or anything else. So they actually, uh, uh, they hired someone uh, who was an animator of the Paramount Studios who actually created a lot of the Hanna-Barbera characters that a lot of us might be familiar with. Um, in this set, and uh, aside from Jackie Robinson, obviously he's like Mickey Mantle uh, and other famous cards like Satchel Page. The Satchel Page is actually a little bit uh, difficult to acquire. I've tried to come, I've tried to uh, acquire it the last few years or so. I've come short a few times on, you know, just eBay auctions. Uh, but uh, this is the one that uh, obviously uh, amongst all the Jackie Robinson's cards that I have, and I have a few of them. This one's my favorite. Um, uh, show the back of that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it has all that really awesome artwork, and uh, unfortunately, that that a chunk that's out of it. But um, but uh, who cares? I mean, that is such a beautiful car. Oh yeah, it's and so it's rated, nice. It's rated as fair condition, uh, which is decent. You know, I know I think like when I when I talk about collecting all these vintage cards, I'm not going out of my way to get something like a pristine <laughs> car that's like you know top notch quality. I think this yeah. is great, good enough quality to admire of its own. Um, so I think as long as you know, as long as the picture like, gets visible. Uh, you know, you can still appreciate the artwork and everything behind it. But this is a, this is a great series. Uh, you know, in, f in a future show, I can even show off some of the other cards that I have in that series. But just uh, yeah, yeah. What else you got there? Yeah. So I got a, a 1933 Lou Gehrig Yachty. So this is in a little uh, less uh, <laughs> condition, but uh, you know, this series is actually uh, quite famous. It's one of the most famous baseball cards uh, series that are out there. A uh, little history behind this is like it's actually the the first American company to issue baseball cards with a stick of gum. So prior to this, uh, you know, you typically saw them available with cigarettes or other forms of company. Uh, sorry, candy. Uh, but this was the first series to actually issue cards with a stick of gum. Like imagine, uh, you know, a lot of people like put out videos now of them chewing like these uh, vintage baseball, <laughs> uh, vintage uh, baseball gum from uh, old card packs. But imagine now. Uh, just going back to 1933, 34, and <laughs> eating one of those. Oh uh, my god! Yeah, that that is, that'd be the ultimate gum challenge. Maybe the final gum challenge. <laughs> yeah. And this is actually smaller That's than an average card. Um, and like I said, like one of the most popular vintage series, the 1933 uh, one has like a very famous uh, four variations of Babe Ruth. Uh, but this is actually my favorite uh, Lou Gehrig card. Uh, you know, when I was obviously this is the only Lou Gehrig card I have, but. Um, Amongst all the ones that were released, I think this was the most uh, appealing to me. Uh, just overall, like the look and look of it, uh, I just I had to get it. So this is the one. Yeah, it's my favorite. That's awesome. And then you have a, you have another one. Um, I do. Yeah, this one's actually. Uh, imagine this is almost 110 years old. Uh, this is a 1911 uh, T205 Trist Speaker. Uh, so amongst this set, actually, uh, this was obviously an American ta tobacco company which released these cards. Um, through 11 different cigarette brands. So this specifically was Piedmont cigarettes. Uh, you know, there's very many variations in the short prints of the cards they had. Like you might see different backgrounds uh, within this, but like imagine this is almost 110 years old and it came in the tobacco. Uh, that, I don't think that it would fly to this day uh, even consideration like, you know, kids collecting cards, but imagine, mm -hmm. imagine having to get your baseball cards through a, a pack of uh, cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or, or just like, a, like chewing tobacco or something like that. That is awesome. What a collection. And uh, Kevin just uh, messaged me on the side saying we could do a whole show on uh, just your just your cards. Uh, yeah, and, you know, I, and we should definitely. Them, not just like the, the cards themselves and look, but just like the story behind them, even though just the, the fact like, you know, that was the first time they actually released uh, bubble gum and baseball cards. It's, uh, it's uh, fun, to, yeah, fun to look back at cool. history. Yeah, and I, I was looking through my stuff, and I've I've acquired so many things on the side. Like I was even surprised at what I had. So we, we should definitely uh, schedule that in. So uh, I'm gonna show, share some stuff, but I want Kevin to go first because oh. Kevin Kevin's uh, Kevin's got like a Hall of Fame uh, treasury right. in in his right. apartment there. I'm yeah. gonna give you a mega twist that you are not ready for. All right. You guys mentioned the 1952 top set, and it reminded me that I have this really weird autograph. So if you're ready, you might want to solo for me on this. This is one of the most famous cards from the 1952 set. Do you remember this? Do you know of this card? 
Oh my goodness. So the guy I met, I was at a card show in, I believe Bakersfield, Bakersfield or Fresno area. Cause I saw that I was just trying to look this up while John was talking. So this is just like literally just, he, he took a photo and put it on eight by 10. Literally. Okay. But this is a really wow. famous card, like the okay. And there's six balls on the bat. And I still don't, this still does not read right. I'm going to read you what it says on his Wikipedia page about this. Get ready for this. Okay. This photo recognized that he tied an American, American League record by hitting six home runs in three consecutive games from May 13 to, nine, May, 13 to May 16, 1951. So I, I, that doesn't, I don't see how he gets six home runs in a game, but <laughs> maybe I'm just reading that. But it says the day after this picture was taken, he had his seventh home run in a fourth consecutive game. So I'm guessing in three games, he had six home runs. I'm guessing. Yeah. That, that, that was, yeah. That seems back, reason. You look here. He, I didn't even realize this. So I turned it over. He actually wrote this on the back six home runs, three games, two, I guess two against the Yankees, four against the Browns. I, I, oh. I yeah. Wow. Three games. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. In three games, he had six home runs. That's crazy. That's so funny. That's he wrote crazy. that. But when John's off of the 53 set, and mentioned 52 set, I'm like, I got to find this. And they happen to be right there. That's really cool. Yeah, because yeah. Growing up, um, I, I, my parents, we, we started going to baseball card shows about 1984 or so, and I didn't collect cards as much, so I'm just looking for a show off, see what I want to show off next. But we were just, we were mostly into collecting just autographs and that kind of things, like collecting some cards here and there. I more got into collecting minor league cards, because I just liked how they were more limited and Part of the fun is like if you buy a set, the guy makes the majors. That card's gonna be worth like a lot more that way. And eventually, you know, I got in high school, and the next thing you know, you know, eh, I'm not gonna collect this stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when my parents, between my parents moving and all that stuff, we lost a lot of the stuff that we had. Like oh. I can only imagine. Like I don't have any more autographed baseballs. We had a couple boxes full of autographed baseballs. I'm like, oh, I'm guessing my dad took that out and sold it while he was out. Um while he was moving out east. So next I want to show off. So an item that is that was that we used to like just because it's just odd. I don't know if you've ever seen these. They would sell cache envelopes, and there you see why I'm doing this because Tom Seaver. Mm -hmm. There would be cache envelopes that they would make commemorating specific events. And this one was for Tom Seaver getting his 2000 strikeout. Wow. And we have to wow. have one of them signed by Seaver. Yeah, uh, just to read this really quick. Uh, and it's stamped on the day it happened, by the way. I don't know if you can see this. A uh, April 18, 1981. That's killer. It says, on fourth inning against the St. Louis Cardinals, Tom Seaver threw a rising slider past uh, Keith Hernandez for the 3,000. Oh, sorry, 3,000. 3,000 strike out of his career. So there you go. Fun fact. Wow. And then this one, again, stamped you know, by the Cincinnati Post Office even and all that. You see. That's everything. cool. That's yeah. amazing. So that was something that we actually liked. And on this envelope, it says Tom Seaver became only the fifth person in Major League Baseball to strike out 3,000 batters. He joins Walter Johnson, Gaylord Perry, Nolan Ryan, and Bob Gibson on the Elite Plateau. Obviously, that's as of 1981. But that's that an really item. Cool. That's You know, that's the kind of thing that we were kind of niche collectors in some ways. Very we unique. Yeah, it's a very unique item. So. Yeah. 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 Well, another show, also, I'll, I mean, that's why I'm trying to just show off kind of unique kind of stuff here. Um I talked about before that um, I knew Duke Snyder growing up a little bit, and I have a I have a couple of photos of these, and it's just so strange seeing him. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. the expos, but you don't <laughs> think right. Duke Snyder in the expos. Yeah, like, I thought, it's such an interesting photo. I was like, I gotta show this one off. I got a lot of Duke Snyder guys, but I'm like, <laughs> he's a coach of the expos. That's pretty cool. That that's so unique. And he's that, that, hair. He was actually going gray by the time he was thirty. He was he was still playing when he was great. He was he had gray hair while playing, right? He was going yeah. gray in like his late twenties, early or, or so, if I remember correctly. He's like, yeah. he's like the Steve Martin of baseball. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, for the also one more thing because uh, Michael and I we you know we great for this one. So Gary for this uh, the back cover is a, if you want to smoke? Here's some cool cigarettes, you know. <laughs> so now the slow deal of. This magazine. So take a look at this, John. Oh, that's awesome. And it's signed too. Yes. So where did that's you acquire this? Uh, so it, it's Hammerin and Hanks, home run record, ja Japanese slugger, Sadar O. Obviously, the only unfortunate part is, you know, someone took the address label off to the subscriber. But um, 
we saw he was going to be signing at a convention at Anaheim Convention Center. I want to say 1991 or so. I think it was the year it was early 90s, and we knew the guy who was, you know, the the guy who would promote these shows. We knew him because we've been going to shows forever. And he's like, "Hey, man, we're going to bring Scott Owen. It's going to be his very first U.S. appearance." And I'm like, "Okay." And we had that, so we like we got to get that signed. Oh, absolutely. We make stuff out of my magic box of collecting of collections. I still have. What what year was that? This SI, um, yeah, sorry, I didn't read the date. It's like seventy. Uh, for one dollar, you can get this in the uh, it's August fifteenth, nineteen seventy seven. Seventy seven, and then when yeah. did, when did you get it signed? Nineteen ninety one, I believe. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah, because I remember uh, seeing some footage where Sadaharo was actually here, and like Tommy Lasorda met him. It's like it's on YouTube. Um, well, that was when he's on the baseball people... bunch. Is that what you're talking about? No. Uh, oh, it might it might have been about that time because I didn't know why he was here because but he was training some people and then so like it was it was really. And you know what? Hey, on the team. time frame, uh, no, I think it was before. Actually, I think when Hideo Nomo came up to the Dodgers, I could easily oh, see them have right. Sarah O come out and meet with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, a publicity shot, you know. Yeah, well, oh, um, you know, that stuff off. that's just a handful of things. I'm not just have to find weird, unique stuff to show off. Because as you know, if you went through the magic box that I have back here, there's some oddball stuff, which is the joy. Well, I, I was going to say for, for every one item uh, that Kevin has, which is amazing, he's lost two items. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> which is very sad okay, to think. Please don't make me get all sad and sentimental here. Well, it makes all those other ones. I mean, like you have so many like great things. So we'll, we'll definitely have a lot to talk about in the See, future. Um, and, and now you got to follow that, sir. <laughs> well, I know I, I'm, I'm, mine's going to pale in comparison. So like, uh, which, which, is, which is fine, which is fine. Maybe like, uh, Jerry, Jerry, Chuck Barry, Jerry Lewis, follow me, follow that. Yes, exactly. I think it's my first time, but. Well, I wanted to uh, give a shout out to the people that are out there first. Um, oh, yeah. uh, John's uh, sister, Melissa, uh, hey. is uh, joining us. Uh, Chad M. Welcome. Hey, and, uh, who, uh, bubble pug is here. Thank you for joining again. And, uh, David, uh, what's going on? Uh, thank you for joining. So let me uh, let me solo myself. So, so uh, my collecting. Um, I mean, I started collecting when I was a teenager. I didn't have anything that was of super value. Um, it was more valuable to me. Um, but so when I got re back into collecting, I started getting some stuff that I, I may not have gotten that I probably wouldn't. Uh, I'm I'm super excited about now. Um, the one that I do have is this uh, Mariano Rivera. It's like a yeah. one of one card. It's an autograph. But it has, um, and I and I have this on on a, a YouTube video when I pulled it, um, and so I I, I, lo I love this card so much because it's so cool. He wasn't a Hall of Famer at the time that they signed this, but it's super cool. Um, as a, uh, a growing up a St. Louis Cardinal fan, this was always fun to pull. I have an Ozzy Smith autographed. It's out of uh, uh, it's actually 15 out of 15, so it's an eBay wow. one of one. That's cool. <laughs> But uh, I, I love this silver signature. So that's, that's you know, as a Cardinal fan and, uh, uh, you know, of this era, I love this one. Um, Michael, Michael, my, my humble brag yeah, yeah. is I might have a one of one on Ozzy Smith autograph. If you, you do, you, you do. We'll, we'll definitely have to show that later. <laughs> it's, it's definitely 100% a one of one. I was thinking about that, but I was like, I can save that one. <laughs> yes. And uh, as, as a, I, I also like John, uh, he started collecting the Hall of Famers, which got me thinking, why don't I start to start collecting uh, the Cardinals? Uh, and uh, uh, I also want to do Hall of Famers, too. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm going a lot slower on that one because it's pretty expensive now. It's it, the prices yeah. have gone up, as uh, oh, yeah. John and I have talked it's about. It was five years back. Yeah, collecting. yeah, yeah. You were you were smart to jump on it when you did because uh, they've gone up. Yeah. But so, but I got stuff like this. It's like a it's a 1951 Bowman Enos Slaughter. Oh my uh, god, it's really super nice. I actually have a Marty Marion too of this same set. So Here. I started like kind of trying to get stuff like this. But then uh, the modern players, um, I, I I love collecting like the modern players too because I you know you never know who's gonna be a star. Uh, but I have this like Fernando Tatis. Um, Woo! Uh, right, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, at the time it was just like, oh, that's for, uh, Fernando Tatis, uh, senior's, uh, son. Uh, maybe he'll be good, <laughs> you know? So, well, uh, stuff like this gets me excited. Share, yeah. Michael, share your Fernando Tatis fact. Oh yeah. Fact. Uh, well, th yeah. The, for the, the reason uh, why that's so special to me, uh, cause as a Cardinal, uh, the very first Dodger game I went to was in 1999, and it was when uh, Fernando Tatis hit two grand slams in one inning off Channel Park. So uh, baseball history yeah. for sure. Oh, and yeah. 
so yeah, it, it, that that was super special, and and uh, and and you know, watch his son play. You know, it ages it ages all of us, but it's like, but it, it's super cool because you you can see like uh, I hope to see um, f uh, father, son, and then uh, you know, I guess uh, grandson. Uh, that that would be pretty Martin fun Jones. to see in my lifetime. And and by the way, there's a fourth generation Boone that just got drafted, I believe, this year. So oh, let's see if he can make it. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, that that's some of our collection. I wanted to start off with that because uh, I definitely wanted to get that in. And John, and we'll definitely bring you back, John, and so we can talk about this some more. And uh, we have some other projects that we're kind of in the works on as well. Uh, All All Angels Podcast is uh, is here tonight, and uh, hey, uh, we might see some of them uh, coming up in the future too. So, a little foreshadowing so. there. Uh, <laughs> and then. Uh, uh, Ed, thank you for joining. Uh, yeah, of course. yeah, Kevin always, yeah, totally. Of course, my job. So he, he started with the age. So, so uh, let's get to uh, one of my favorite segments. Uh, what are you drinking? So let's uh, let's do this. Yes. What are you drinking tonight? Uh, let me uh, go back to here. Now, Kevin, you have a very unique beer. So uh, yeah, one I, I couldn't even find on beer. anywhere. So tell us about it. Beers. So. Literally, like the other day, I went to um, this Japanese cafe by me, mm. and they were hosting a, a, a steak and barbecue restaurant in, I think, Torrance. And they're like, oh, we made our own beer. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and literally, it was like six bucks per bottle. I'm like, whoa. You know, this is literally just a 12 ounce bottle. But I'm like, I've never heard of this. And they probably, it's probably super living. I'm like, you know what? For the show, this is really this is really an interesting, unique beer because literally this restaurant, they have a location, uh, I believe, in Lomita and Torrance, and then a location in Kobe, Japan. Oh, and this is a place wow. that has like really high quality like Wagyu beef and Kobe beef. You know, that day I got a steak bento box, and my gosh, the steak was, was awesome. So decided to just go for this. The Pilsner, I'm, I, I just took a sip of that, but are you double fisting? <laughs> he is. Not yet. Well, it's two different beers, so I, I shouldn't do that. I just have both open and ready. I'm not drinking out of the jug today. <laughs> I have both ready. That would be. I'm not. I don't think I need a mix. You know, it's like you know, it's like you don't go from liquor. You know, liquor before beer in the clear. Beer before liquor, never sicker. You know, <laughs> that definitely applies to me. That's an old wife too. Yeah, but this is. These are just unique beers. So I figured I gotta try this. It's so unique. I didn't even find this on Untapped. <laughs> so, who knows? I. I I don't even know if you, you can probably only get this at their restaurant, I'm assuming, right now. So yeah, I'm the Pilsner right now, and it's it's good. nice and refreshing on a warm uh, late afternoon, early evening. Those those rules don't apply for COVID, by the way. So uh, the the rules for, for all it, that liquor. It's good about the hangover in the morning, all right? All right, whatever. <laughs> uh, Kevin, Kevin is – I used to say Kevin was the Foster Brooks of wrestling, and now he's the Foster Brooks of uh, the beer baseball <laughs> broadcast. Um, there's your wow. That's there's your. Super <laughs> that's deep a very deep today. cut. Only Ed, at, you know, was gonna know what we're talking about there. So John, John, you had a unique one too. So uh, show us what you got there. Yeah, actually, very unique out of my uh, out of my traditional comfort zone. This is a a Novo Brazil Brewing Company. It's an Imperial Stout Corvo Negro. Okay. Uh, you can see there, eleven percent alcohol. Uh, oh wow! Alcohol. So, you only need one, brother. But um, yeah, it's pretty intense. It's like I said, it's outside my comfort zone. I'm typically not a drinker of stouts. Uh, I'm, I'm, at first, the initial taste or like uh, texture was like a, I compared it to a Mississippi mud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if anyone's familiar yes. with that. It's a lot better. Is, don't worry. I don't, is uh, it flavored? Like it's like with coffee or anything like that? Or is it just a straight stout? Uh, it's just a straight stout. It's pretty good, okay. though. Um, well, more unique than that. If you have a glass, I would suggest pour it in a glass. It might help that. You know, exactly. Be yeah. Better. Yeah, but a good proper yeah. glass for that. Yeah, it's gush. It says gushes with aromas of coffee, cocoa, caramel, vanilla. Oh, see that. Oh, okay. All right, but not bad. It's a brewery out of uh, Chula Vista. <laughs> yeah, so. it, it, has, it has a great comment. Uh, Kevin, yes, Kevin's sir. triple yep. play means two beers in a shot, which is absolutely yep. the truth. Of course. <laughs> and uh, I have two beers that I have a shot. Ed, where's my shot? Give me a shot. Ready. Yeah, so that that's a very unique beer, John, especially for you because you, you're usually go. Uh, you're not really a beer a super beer drinker, so like, yeah, that's you. You you're being thrown in the de way deep end. Yeah, <laughs> you would probably enjoy like a in, like one of those imperial stouts that they're like a coffee or like a 
chocolate vanilla flavor or peanut butter stouts are you probably really like that yeah. too. Yeah, I think that you would like those as well. But you know, one or two of those and you're gonna be like feeling it. Yeah. I say oh, yeah, those are go home beers. Yes. <laughs> I imagine uh, beers is healthy for me. I yeah. imagine that percentage of alcohol. I feel like I gained five pounds after a few sips already. <laughs> It's like drinking like a, a like a, about four loaves of bread. Yeah, yeah, that's always how right. I drink one of those uh, Mississippi mud uh, jugs in a full <laughs> <sleep laughs> and just wow. I I feel like I had one of those. That's yeah. my gimmick. Drinking out of a jug is my gimmick on this show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I won't steal it then. <laughs> and then um, mine is the uh, Bell's um, a Two Hearted Ale. Um, you know, it's it's got like bitter uh, citrus yeah. and pine. Um, an ABV of seven, so uh, nowhere near John's. Um, but this is this is uh, Bell's always has really solid beer. Uh, anything that I've had from them is great. You you have one that you like from Bell's too, right, uh, Kevin? Uh, yeah, the Hop Slam. Hop Slam. That's a really great IPA. It's like about ten percent IPA. It's, it's not available year round, but if you really like a, a good IPA, oh, you can't go wrong with that one. Yeah, and I and I like this. It's a, a nineteen ounce can as well, so a little oh, yeah, bit extra. Very good. Uh, right there. So uh, very good. All right. So let's get into this day in baseball history for September 29th. This is a very special one, actually. And we and uh, uh, you'll see when um, and uh, let me get into it right now. September 29th, 1934 at Griffith Stadium in Washington, D.C. Yankees legend Babe Ruth hits his 659th and final home run wearing the pinstripes. The Bambino had 49 home runs with the Red Sox prior to coming to New York and will add six additional round trippers with the Braves before retiring next season. Um, actually, uh, real quick, uh, don't you have a Babe Ruth card, uh, John? I do, actually. I have his. Uh, I, have, I have it right here, too. Um, so it was one of the, I, won't, I won't fully present it, but it was one of his uh, – it was his final year, actually, as, uh, in life. <laughs> he actually uh, passed away in uh, 1948. But it was yeah. his final appearance at Yankee Stadium as well. Oh wow! Uh, but yeah, this is a 1948 Leaf card. Um, I th- again, one of the you know several options amongst Babe Ruth. A lot of the famous ones are in that 1933 Gaudi set. Uh, but this is the one that stands out to me the most, just based oh, on the look. Just a really cool card all around. That's very cool. And uh, yeah, well, today in history, he hit uh, hit that home run. On September 29th, 1945, Paul Gillespie uh, becomes the first of only two players in baseball history to ever hit home runs in their first and last big league at bats. Wow. The wartime Cubs reserve catcher went deep against the Giants at the Polo Grounds on September 11th, 1942, and ends his career home run at the spacious Forbes Field, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. So very, very unique. What a unique stat. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah. On September 29th, 1954, in a game which will be re- best remembered for Willie Mays making a spectacular over-the-shoulder grab of the ball hit to deep center field, robbing Vic Wirtz of an extra base hit, Dustin Rhodes becomes the oh, second man. player in World Series history uh, to end the game with a homer. Diverse uh, career, jump- wrestling, wrestling and baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's actually in uh, yeah, World Championship Wrestling, NWA, and all that stuff. No, that's a different Dusty Rhodes. Uh, the Giants pinch hitter uh, walk-off three-run home run off Bob Lemon beats the Indians 5-2 to two in a game one of the fall classic. Now, as if, you know, that's a very uh, seminal game, right? Uh, yeah. It's one that we always talk about. That's a very yeah. iconic oh, yeah. picture. Yeah, sir. So get this. Oh, no. The same day. Willie Mays gives the glove he used to make the one of the most spectacular catches in baseball history, an amazing over-the-shoulder grab of Vic Wirtz. Uh, he gives it to a teammate's six-year-old son. When he gets older, Craig Little will use the immortal piece of leather in Little League games. Oh so he gave God. it to Don Little, his teammate. <laughs> so uh, here is the glove, and uh, it's, oh, it, it actually has some little league, uh, a big league, and little league experience. Ah, uh, my goodness! That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Kevin. He just has these, you know, heirlooms thrown down to him, and then yeah, he just yeah, has that's, to keep. That's them. a misperception of value. I remember, I as a kid too, I got like a Luis Gonzalez's autograph on a baseball, and I thought, yeah, Luis Gonzalez isn't going to do anything. He only uh, <laughs> off against like the, uh, the Yankees. You know, and the- one world series, but yeah, I ended up playing with the ball. I lost it. Um, of course. So you, you, you underappreciate stuff like this sometimes and yes. don't know the value of things as a kid. 
<laughs> when my family moved from California out east, we were just getting rid of stuff, and we had a dumpster. We were throwing stuff out, and I literally was going through some baseballs, looking at autographs, going, "I think I was beating Gavilia, and I was, and I just threw it in the dumpster." <laughs> oh, in 2006, because I'm like, you know, I I don't think it's going to be worth a lot of money. And I'm just looking through it because I know it's going to be worse than what's not. I'm throwing it. And there's like people diving in to try to get the ball in after I get it. I'm like, okay, guys, you get a couple bucks for this. Why not? You know? Yeah, just like a real life sandlot. That's, I was thinking yeah. the same thing for sure. Yeah, exactly. September 29th, 1963. On the final day of the season, John Pashorek, brother of Tom and Jim, goes three for three driving in three runs and scoring four times in his big league debut as Houston routes the Mets at Colt Stadium 13-4. to Due to severe back problems, the 18-year-old Colt 45's right fielder who makes two outstanding defensive catches will never play in the big league game ever again. Now, John, you have a very special connection to this man. What is it? Yeah, yeah so uh, between uh, nursery and eighth grade, so cumulative, uh, probably like 11 years. Uh, he was actually my PE coach. Um, so I had a you know, very close connection in terms of even, uh, I was uh, very fond of playing baseball too, growing up. So like he taught me a lot about, uh, you know, even pitching and, uh, and hitting and growing up. Uh, so even like uh, during elementary school, some of the later years between sixth and eighth grade, I played, we played like, you know, other schools, we played competitively and he was the, the main coach there. So I spent a lot of time with him uh, coaching me and a uh, very knowledgeable guy in terms of, you know, all sports, a uh, very athletic family. Um, just uh, amazing experience actually, to, you know, to have someone with that status as a, uh, you know, a PE coach growing up. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and uh, we were almost, uh, almost had him available uh, for this blog cast. Uh, we actually, uh, he, you're actually friends with him on Facebook and we actually reached out to him. So maybe in the future we will actually have him. And it would be awesome to talk to him about oh, this yeah. and uh, reconnect you two. Uh, but uh, we almost had him for tonight. It would have been amazing. Now, if this would have happened either yesterday or today, or, yeah. sorry, yesterday or, or Wednesday, mm -hmm. this would have never happened. So it's amazing that it was on this day. Uh, <laughs> that it brought, it brought to my attention. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Don't, don't you know him? And I was just like, crazy crazy wow. right yeah just an amazing day in baseball history in general a lot of this a lot of these stories and stuff like it's amazing like it's references that a lot of people know too yep yeah. yep so on so uh one year later september 29th 1964 masanori murakami becomes the first born uh first player born in japan with a major league game to win a major league game at candlestick park the 20 year old southpaw one hits the Colt 45s over three innings, and and the Otsuki native gets the vect victory when Matty Alou, who hasn't homered in two years, goes deep for the Giants, a dramatic 5-4 to four win in the bottom of the 11th inning. Now, we had talked about him before yep. on uh, this day in baseball, and um, he, he won a game today. So um, and, I, and I love this picture. I thought it was an amazing yeah, picture. He excuse me to bring back that photo of the hot dog. <laughs> 100%. Did he play in a hot dog eating contest that same day? <laughs> <laughs> Just like Kobayashi, uh, the I hot dog eating champion. That'd be, that'd be amazing. So this is this is for John, uh, a Braves fan. September 29th, 1973, Hank Aaron uh, takes Houston's Jerry Royce deep for his 40th home run of the season in the Braves seven to nothing victory at Atlanta Stadium. Hammer and Hank joins teammates Davey Johnson and Daryl Evans in reaching uh -oh. the milestone making them the first trio to accomplish the feat for the same club. Wow. Now Davey Johnson. Yeah. Davy Johnson. I never even thought of him in 40 oh. home runs in a season. Like, right. Yeah. Right. Say again. I've always envisioned him as just a Orioles manager, right? Say again? I've always envisioned him as just a Orioles, he was a Orioles manager, right? Davy Johnson. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, he was a uh, yes. Mets. Yeah. Yeah. Mets he went the Mets, the A6 world series. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So but that's just Skippy, funny. Like that blows me away. But Joe Evans is a hell of a player. Really yeah, underrated. Oh, totally. I, I know more as a giant, right? But it, that's right. He was. On, I think he was uh, a tiger. <laughs> as a tiger, you know, of course. Yes, like exactly. Feelings as a kid, you know, beating up the angels. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, 
in 1996 on the same day. Hitting his 40th homer, Rockies wow. third baseman Vinny Castilla joins Andres Galarraga and Ellis Burks to be- become the first trio of teammates in 23 that's, years to hit 40 homers for well, one team. So two times it happened on this date. The back-to-back times, no less. Wow. Back-to-back, yeah. It's, uh, wow. That's pretty cool. That's and and really there's, there's another name of a, of a great player that doesn't get a lot of uh, – uh, kind of praise of Vinny Castilla. Actually, we talk about Ellis Burks all the time because he yeah, was the one that uh, wasn't he the one that homered in all the stadiums as well. Or? Yeah, he was up there. Yes, we it came, came up last week in one of our discussions with uh, I think was it Dick Allen, I believe. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, and I, his name comes up again, I believe, uh, later on at, at the end of this. Cool. And I just got Laraga. I'm like 47 home runs. I'm like, wait a minute, can you go back? Was that are they all Rockies? Yeah. Rockies and the mid '90s, you know, that's going to yeah, produce some home runs. Exactly. Yep. Great team. Larry Walker included in there. Eric Young. Yeah. yeah. It's a great team. Yep. Oh yeah. So on September September 29th, 1986, oh, wow. Mike oh, and Greg oh, Maddox yeah. becomes the first siblings to start a game against each other <laughs> in the rookie matchup. Cubs righty Greg beats his older brother, uh, and the Phillies. And the Phillies in the city of brotherly love. I don't know. I I didn't write this. So uh, six to three. Uh, so sometimes I need to talk these things out. But uh, I love is, this picture because it looks like they the shut right off the wrong, stadium Michael? lights. Sorry? Have, do you have the year wrong? Because we went from 80. We went to Yeah, 90. I I jumped ahead. But remember, it was 23 yeah, years later. I just so, didn't think Maddox was in the major leagues in 86. That's what throws me off. Yeah. Back to the future, uh, Kevin. Yeah, I know. Because yeah. I had a minor league car, Greg Maddox, in when I thought it was 87 Iowa Cubs. And maybe he got called up. Like that in, in the number uh, of look, look, look up, about. look up if if he was if he played. Yeah, no, no worries. I'm, I'm just. <laughs> I, I, I'm I like curious. this picture too because it looks like they shut up the stadium uh, and then they they took a picture yeah. of him. <laughs> like, well, get well, out of here! If that Erin's Memorial Stadium, that could really have happened. The lights just go out all of a sudden. I was disappointed when uh, Greg Maddox dropped that look, the mustache. It looked like yeah, he was, yeah. Uh, yeah. It looked like he was slinging dope. <laughs> they both look like out of Boogie Nights or something. Well, it's the 80s, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. September so, 29th. By the 19- way, he debuted in September the September 3rd. That was his MLB debut, September oh, 3rd. Well, there he you was go. literally only a couple, a few starts into his career. Nice. September 29th, 1996. Although he is four shy of the necessary 502 plate appearances, uh, appearances requirement, Tony Gwynn, Tony Gwynn hitting 353 is given the National League batting crown using the Ofer clause, which has been in the rule books for 30 years but never invoked. The additional of four mythical hitless at bats would leave the Padres outfielder with a 349 average, still five points better than runner up Ellis Burks of the Rockies. So, uh, I remember when this happened. And I, I, I didn't really understand it at the time. Um, and uh, I didn't even know that there was a clause in there that to get yeah. them the, the mythical at bats. So, um, what? like what, what, who created this rule? You know, there's a lot to look into here. Yeah. And again, yeah, it worked that same year, 40 home runs and he batted, mm-hmm. you know, wow. 344, 41 home runs or whatever. Jeez. So, Ellis Burke's another underappreciated hitter that, I mean, he's done so many things and uh, no one talks Again, about him. Again, a Rocky. Yeah. During, the, the during that era, right. It was, uh, yeah, you know, three years started, after they started. Just, yeah, it was shenanigans. Yep. Not to say that they shenanigans, but they're shenanigans. <laughs> so speaking of Tony Gwynn, uh, September 29th, 2007, one out away from clinching a playoff berth, Padres closer Trevor Hoffman Ooh. gives up the game-winning pinch hit triple to Tony oh. Gwynn Jr., oh. son of a former teammate he used to babysit. <laughs> the Padres would lose the, lose the game as well as tomorrow's finale, resulting in a one-game playoff to the Colorado Rockies that keeps the team out of the postseason. Oh. And uh, if you remember, it was this play. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. And, oh. uh, and actually, this play happened off Trevor Hoffman as well. Oh, my gosh. And, and, uh, and now I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out. One second answer. Did Matt holiday touch the plate? I don't believe he did. No. Wasn't that the controversy over it? Yes. There, there's a lot. There's like articles out there that say he touched the plate. I still think he hasn't touched the plate. <laughs> he still hasn't. 21. Still has not touched the plate. No. no. 
Yeah, I, I, I also love this. Too. And, he actually and play. you have bias because, you know, former Cardinal. So, you know, if you're yeah, not he, admitting it, you know. He, he was great for the Cardinals, although he had some he had some good gaffes, uh, which uh, I remember against the Dodgers, like he had a ball that uh, he was going to catch and it actually hit him right right in the groin, let's say. <laughs> right way. Yeah, so he had he had some he had some very adventurous plays. All right, so uh, that is this day in baseball history. Bravo. Always fun, and uh, definitely, uh, you know, having our guest here uh, be in a, a special connection is, is, uh, makes it even more special. So let's go to uh, – actually, I want to go back to this, and let's go to Baseball Card Pack Wars. Right. Uh, we are not sponsored, uh, but we endorse getting baseball cards at Hall of Fame Baseball Cards in Arcadia, California, hofbc.com. Here are the standings. Angelo is not playing today, so uh, playing for the guests is uh, uh, Top Gun Tall War. Uh, we actually uh, uh, we haven't had uh, anybody play on the guest side for a long time. Yep. And uh, Kevin is making his way back in the standings. I think Angelo probably just needed a, a day off, as it were. Uh, you he know, needs to go he, on the All Angels podcast. <laughs> he needs to get back on the All Angels podcast. That that's actually gave him a, a great boost. So uh, here are the rules. Uh, we're going to open our packs. A relic card knocks out one participant of choice. An autograph card knocks out two participants. High numbered card wins. We drink when we get a brewer's card. The wild card round, which is the third round, equals two points. And uh, I don't see him uh, on, uh, but our broadcast super fan, Cowboy Jack Durango, is mandatory uh, that he drinks after every uh, card <laughs> that we pull. So uh, the, he has a lot, but I, I don't see him in the uh, chat. So uh, Cowboy Jack, wherever you're at, salute. He, he's drinking. Don't worry, he's drinking somewhere. Regardless. Yeah, he's yeah, he's drinking. He, any any liquid he's that's around, he's Angelo. drinking it. Who knows? He's on the side of Angelo. Let's all right. So, so uh, we have a guest. So uh, we're gonna start out with uh, Big League Baseball 2020. That's the uh, card set that I actually got uh, for oh, John sure. here. So we're gonna start with those. Oh, we yeah. all have one of those. So uh, go ahead and open that. John, and uh, show us what you got, and then afterward, uh, t- tally your high number while we uh, go through it. So, go perfect. For it. Okay, so we'll do. So start. Yeah, we've had any of these yet. Uh, Chris Sale. We got uh, RBI leaders in the NL. Uh, Carlos Santana on the Indians. Gavin Lux, second baseman for the Dodgers. Nice. Eduardo Rodriguez, pitcher for the Red Sox. There we go, Acuna. A flipping out Acuna card. Ooh, oh, cool. Nice. Marcus Stroman. That's got a unique... a Met? Yeah, I get it. That's the orange variation. Oh, yeah. Jeez. That's, yeah, I was going to say that looked different. Christian Walker. Xander Bogarts. It looks like American League uh, hit leaders. Oh, right on. All right. Okay, so tally uh, your high number in the background uh, while I go to Kevin. Hey, so uh, did you say your other – did you have an NL leader in there, John? Yeah, it was an NL uh, RBI leaders. NL – well, was there a brewer on there? Uh, There was not. So it was Pete Alonzo, Freddie. Tristan Yellick? Come on. I was down. Rats. Nope, no yellow. <laughs> I'm going to take a drink. That's all. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm, one beer's down. I'm, I'm going to try this. Uh, my Tama and beer IPA. Literally as generic as you can get. <laughs> uh, I'm trying, Mr. Mr. Brown. Let's see what we got here. All right. Wilson Contreras. Willie Adams. Uh, highlight card of the Angels. Those highlights. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Brandon Lowe. Aristides uh, Kino. John, I may have to trade you for this one. Here's a uh, uh, Acuna Jr. insert. Oh, nice. Nice. It's nice a story. star character reproduction, it says here. Why is his head so big? <laughs> Well, it's a character. That's why. Okay. Hey, he, he, he gets pulled out of the like, game because you know, his head's so big. No, not because it's not Barry Bonds. Why his head's big? 
Uh, my orange variation is Will Smith. Getting jiggy with it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I got uh, Matthew Boyd, Paul Goldschmidt, and Joey Gallo. Oh, come on. We need some brewers here. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? All right. All right. I like that Gunas Jr. card, though. That's a, that's a winner. Sir D.D. Gregorius. He's knighted. He with the Phillies. And a Brewer. Christian hey! Yelich Award winners, finally. Oh, Bubble Pug. What do you think? Here's Bubble Pug. And good luck to your team. Yeah. Aaron Judge. Cattell Marte. Andrew Benintendi. Uh, speaking of uh, one of the cards I showed before, a Fernando Tatis Jr. has the same kind of cartoon variation. Okay, so very nice. I want to one of those every time, possibly. Yeah, cool. so this is a, you have received a star caricature reproduction. I think that's what that's called. Uh, my orange variation is Renato Nunez. Renato. Nice. Underrated yeah. player. Oh, really? You've seen him play? Yeah, he's great. Great stats. Awesome. So this is a uh, American 2019 American League run batted in uh, leaders, uh, Abreu, Bogart, Solar, uh, Baby Giraffe, Brandon Belt. I didn't know that was and, his nickname. That's great. Yeah, that's his nickname, Baby Giraffe. That's great. Because he has, he has really big shins. And uh, Sonny Gray of the Reds. All right, John. So uh, you were first. So what was your high card? Uh, high card was two forty four. Two forty four. All right, what you got, um, Kevin? Michael. How many cards are in this set? Do you know? In, in the complete set? Yeah, in this set. Do you know? Uh, I do. I don't know actually. Because I think I could tell you because I have two ninety eight and two ninety nine. Oh, wow. I think that's the of this, maybe. I well, wish I could have gone to Christian Yelich at 275. So, uh, well, yeah. I've so, both twice. <laughs> that is, uh, that's awesome. Ah, Kevin. Uh, How are the Angels 299? Gosh. I'm guessing 300 is the kill card. That's my guess. It might, it might I never had to do any research. I literally walked in from my assignment, you know. Next thing you know, uh, we're starting to count. All right. So, you go first, Kevin. Bubble pug like Of course, yeah. I hope you I believe me. Not that I'm biased, but yeah, I, I want them to, to beat that team they're playing. Let's see. I'm just reaching in the box here. I like that I can just pick up a packet random here. I, I like it. Nice to have a fresh box. Let's see what we got here. All right. We got the man who hopefully wins MV, the National League MVP, Freddie Freeman. There you go. Yeah, you know, he's season. at COVID, and he had an incredible season coming back. Yeah. Didi, glorious. Oh, I, I believe you got there. Here you go. You got this card earlier. Oh crap! So he got to be two seventy five. Oh, well, that's good to know. Well, cheers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Darn it. So two seventy five on the back end. I love this card. Uh, look at this Kyle Schwarber card. It's like you guys got a Gatorade bath. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Maybe that's maybe that's that game uh, you went to. It, it might have been the game that I was at. Yeah, where you hit the walk off, right? Yep. All right, we got Blake Snell. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm showing off. I, I come on, I don't get a chance to show off much. This is my creative outlet, sir. All right, we got a uh, highlight card, uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. I don't Acuna, yeah. yes. A lot of Acuna. Yeah. Uh, my orange variation is Aristide Aquino. Very nice. Uh, I got a flipping out of Jue Soler. Mm -hmm. There it is, an insert. Uh, we got uh, Andres Munoz. And award winner of Yodan Alvarez. Nice. Yes. Uh, John, I'm going to let you go next. Uh, I, I'm looking at the back here. Uh, did you know that uh, Christian Yelich is actually from Thousand Oaks? Oh. Yeah, I did I know, know that. that. Yeah. Wow. Did you know that? Oh, I, I didn't know I that. Did, yeah. 
I think when they had that uh, unfortunate the uh, negative incident like last year the shooting, uh, oh. he had tweeted out about it. Oh, he. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh wow. So I I got a similar. I got so I'm I'm getting the same cards. This is funny. Oh, so, no. uh, Sir Didi Gregorius the knighted. <laughs> Sir Didi. Sir uh, Christian Yelich. Oh. Again. Oh my God. Um, we have all three. Uh oh. Are we have a tie. Hey, drink. Hey, take your drink. You it's may not right. want it. That's a, that's a heavy uh -huh. stout. Uh, NL run scored. There's no brewer there. I didn't get that. There you go. Uh, Bellinger, there Rendon, uh, Dansby Swanson. That's a cool card. I only hope I have higher than a 275. JT Real Muto. Free agent next year. Yep. <laughs> uh, AL strikeout leaders. Cool. Oh, this is a nice looking one. It looks like a special card. Joey Lucchesi. It's like oh, a. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, it's wow. A, a Chrome very. It's a. Uh, look at it. It's, it's numbered. 155. It, oh, yeah, it is numbered. Let's turn it around. Can you read the sure. number to us, John? Yeah, it's 155 out of. Oh, sorry. It's 55 out of 100, not 155. Wow. 100, awesome. But. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. That's, that's kind of. That's very rare. That's Scott cool. Henry, yeah. Defensive Wizards, Hunjin Ru. Uh, is it a Blue Jay? Yeah, Blue Jay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and hopefully they the playoffs. Nice. That's it. Good pack. Yeah. We might have a tie here for the high card. Yeah. Ugh. All right. God. Yeah, there I don't you know. Go. Let's do this. A little All nervous. Right. A little nervous here. Let's see. Isan Diaz. I actually have his uh, autograph card in a Bowman set. Cool. Uh, Nico Goodrum for the Tigers. Uh, run scored leaders. Uh, we have Acuna, Bellinger, and Rendon. Ah, oh, I was going for a Yelly in there. Yeah. Uh, Dansby Swanson, the same one that John just got. That's a good uh, Same, same uh, J JT Romuto. And, wow. but, those are cool. but these are actually really nice photos of these cards. I dig the, the photos. I think, I think they're super cool, too. Like, this one's really cool. That what Your, your buddy, uh, Lo Nolan Arenado. My, yeah, my, my friend Nolan, yes. That's yeah. an insert. Is that an insert? It, it might be. Um, it, it has to be. Roll call. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, I've never roll call, so that's got to be an insert. Very good. So my, uh, my orange is uh, Joe Musgrove. All right. This so we get an orange of those every pack. Okay. Yeah. One, 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 uh, but John got a real winner with that of 100. Wow. So the ERA leaders, uh, National League, uh, Ryu, DeGrom, Soroka, Shane, Justin Bieber. Who had a Man, he just won the Triple year. Crown. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. Like, win, carry, and strike, I believe is what he got. Game and Ferris cool, the night. cool wit Merrifield. Cool win there, Phil. There you go. Very nice. All right. So, Kevin, uh, you are up. Are you, you sure you want me to go first? Are you sure you want me to go first? Well, I know that you don't have, like, the 298 and 299. Yeah, but what if I told you oh, I have the 300? Oh, wow. 300? Oh, <laughs> that Ronald Acuna card is 300. Ugh. I think Get that's the kill here. card. Three for two for two so far, huh? What do you get? What well, do you I mean, I'm, I'm guessing. Unless, I'm guessing there's three hundred cards. Two seventy five. I had yellowage too, so it's two seventy five. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah Otherwise, it was. I saw that. You know, like whoa. Kevin. Yeah, and Fuego. Fuego. All right. Wild card time. Okay, so the way this is go because we have a guest and I sent him yeah. the cards. So he has, um, you know, the, the same big league pack, so uh, he can pick from there. We usually do a wild card where we pick from a bag, and we have different types yes. of uh, cards. So we may have four cards. We may have 15, depending on what we got right here. And I have the same thing. All right. So, uh, so you, you have 10, so you have, a, you have good odds. You have, yeah, uh, well, that's pack, why so I had back good. in my mind a variant to shut John out. Okay. So you ready to hear my variant? That I'm gonna throw at you. Yeah. Which? Uh, how about the pack with the least amount of pitchers wins? Okay. Mm. So so if you have, Am I allowed uh, to do that? if I have five pitchers, John has five pitchers, and you have six. Oh no no. Uh, you have. Yeah. Then four. you guys are tied. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. So, I'm saying the least amount of pictures. Least amount of I, I pictures. I'm going for something crazy here. I, I love that it. idea came to me. Liz, I walked in the doorway. I'm like, I know there's a lot. There's more. There's a good, decent amount of cards in these. You know. Now watch. I'll pull out like the 15 card thing here. And of course I did. Big out something big. I had the 1992 upper deck. Uh -oh. oh nice. Uh oh. I, well, I know I'm not going to get an autograph card here, but there is, uh, it says 15 cards, so there we go. Uh, look for collector holograms, ramp, random sequencing, tamper resistant pack. Each card is holographically enhanced. Every pack puts you in the game. Like it. Here. It says find the bench Morgan. I guess like a combo card. It says look for Ted Williams best hitter insert cards. Let's see what we got here. Now they jinx myself. Watch me get like twelve pictures in this pack, right? <laughs> right, right. Let's see. All right, and literally the first card I see is a pitcher, <laughs> and that pitcher is the Phillies pitcher Terry Mulholland. Oh, we're gonna have fun just looking, just oh, looking at these cards. Yeah, look at that. awesome. Uh, look at the look, and that's something unique too. They have photos of the player on that's the back. That's right. That's really unique. As a as a graphic designer, this is this card set is a nightmare because it's color on both sides and two pictures on both sides, hologram, yeah, that, all that type hologram. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! All right, next we got the superstar Pedro Munoz. Wow, superstar! Never heard of sure. him. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We got oh my goodness, a player I love going. Bit Leon, I think Leon's the first name. Bip oh, Robert. Bip Robert. That's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. I remember meeting him at a couple of card shows. And he was he was a really cool dude. He played for the Padres, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yep. Really yep. cool dude when I met him at shows over the years. Unfortunately for me, another pitcher, Mr. Randy Myers. Look at that guy right there. Wow. I, I'm just taking this <laughs> look at these cards. These are really cool. Yeah. Uh let's see here. Oh goodness gracious! Seriously, another pitcher, Mike Morgan from the Doyers. Uh oh, oh I know I'm already at three. I jinxed myself. You did. You shouldn't have picked the stipulation. Oh, I like this one. A star rookie. Have you guys ever heard of this guy? Star rookie. Look at this guy. Jim Tomey. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he turned out okay. Hey, he did all right. I remember getting his autograph at spring training in Tucson at High Corporate Field, uh, Michael. Oh, Nobody wow. on the How back, cool. though. He wasn't that much of a star yet. But not yeah. a pitcher. All right. Let's see here. Oh, good. Uh, we got Todd Hundley. Batting and catcher here. Okay. Let's see here. We got <laughs> Terry Shumpert. Why is that <laughs> photo on his card? Why? <laughs> I, just, I just can't believe that photo. Oh, my gosh. That photo is <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I right. Angel's favorite in the night, Gary Desar Cena. I was want to say it like the, like the old days. <laughs> you know, shortstop Gary Desar Cena. See here. Oh my goodness, Kurt Stillwell. There's a hot prospect. Wow, you have a lot of Padres Kurt? cards. Padres, yeah. yeah. Look at that. And Kurt Stillwell is actually like a huge prospect that just never met his, met his potential. You know. Oh, goodness. Here's another picture. Look at this guy. Rick sucked up on the Orioles. Oh, I don't even remember playing uh, me on the Orioles. And here's the no nice autographs for the fans. Wow. Looking in tip-top shape he, there. He's made, a, he's made a career being a commentator after the fact. I think I saw him in home improvement. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, another guy I never heard of. Second baseman for the Royals, Keith Miller. Oh, my God. I don't know why that's his photo either. At least here he has, he's at least making contact. Yeah. But Let's it looks see. like it's not going to be like an out for sure, yeah. you know? All right, we got – oh, get your cups ready, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to – if you're talking signature brewers here, unfortunately for me it's a pitcher. Pitcher, Chris Bosio signing an autograph. Oh, wow. Fan. Yeah, yeah. I remember him. Great for Chris Bosio. Cheers to Chris Bosio. Chris Bosio, too. Probably awesome. two points in this round. But, you Tell know. Me, how many pitchers is that? Six, five? A lot. I put him up the side. I'm not even getting to the end. Oh, a great uh, hitter, mostly known for the Royals. Jim Eisenreich. There's an underrated guy's in the yes. night right there. Jim Eisenreich. 
getting hit. Well, like he's getting a hit there, and then there he is at first after he got a hit. Different jersey, but you know details. I think a little known fact about Jim Eisenreich has Tourette's. Oh, that's he was right. Like the, I, I he was the first person that. I knew that had Tourette's. And, uh, and lastly, going back to the California Angels, I don't remember what position this guy played in the infield. Infielder Donnie Hill. Wow. Donnie. All Hill. right. That sounds good. So my idea to shut Jan out gave me five pitchers. <laughs> a, lot of, five a, lot of, of, a lot of star power in that. Pick. Oh, yeah. Chris Bozio. He at least got me to take a swig of, of drink. I think Terry, Mul- Terry Mulholland might have been the biggest star. <laughs> Rick Sutcliffe, <laughs> come on. He might as a good player. Curse All right, John, you're up. I'm up good good. Let's see. So same tops pack. Uh, come on, Jim Tomey. How dare you? Yeah, j- yeah. Hall of Famer. Yeah, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. That's, a, that's a really good that one. That might be worth yeah. something. That's a rookie card. Oh, yep. Yeah. Well, this is some, <laughs> some, some uh, variation here, finally. So Anthony Rendon is a national Ooh. award nice. winner card. That's a high card, actually. Uh, Freddie Freeman. And look at you, no pitchers yet. DeWell Lugo from the Tigers. Yeah. Watch you get no pitchers. Uh, you know, oh, my gosh. I... Yeah, so far, no pitchers. Andrew Benatini. I think you already beat me. I'm already out. <laughs> you already got me through your pack. Aaron Hicks flipping out. Nice. Wow. Well, here's, one, here's one pitcher. Uh, Jack Flaherty from the Cardinals. There's one pitcher aside. Uh, there's a Brewer coming up here. So uh, Ryan Braun. Yay! Ooh. He's finally saw us now. But whatever, <laughs> I, I want to. Everybody, to. everybody hates Ryan Braun uh, <laughs> out here for some reason. There's Josh Bell, and then uh, award winner is Mike Trout. All right! Oh, wow, you got one cool. out of ten. I got like five out of like. 15. Very good. Wait, Ed says that Chris Bozio was on his last fantasy baseball. When did we, <laughs> in the 90s? Was it, been with, it might have been with me because I know I was doing fantasy baseball in the 90s. I don't remember if I did one with him, but gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, funny. Michael, right. at some point, you need to unleash the power of your shirt because I've not had a chance to segue oh, into that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Please? Also, uh, 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 yeah, two things. Monkey, my hat yeah. is the Lamigo Monkeys, which is uh, was a uh, Chinese Taiwan. Taipei team, a Taiwan I, I team. I thought they were from Taiwan, or I think they're from Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwanese so baseball like, team. Yes, it has um, that. We we have a uh, secret uh, mysterious benefactor who like travels around the world and gets us all this cool stuff. But yep. I have uh, Peter Beckett, uh, the voice of player. So Kevin and I went to Palm Springs and we saw all these old bands and uh, he was the one, if I can turn around here. Oh my God. Yeah, there you go. That's like so punk rock. So players known for a song called baby come back. If you can, could you put it in the references playlist? Absolutely. Baby come back. Right. You can it's a huge it hit. On me. But I love it that we, we went to Calvin and winter league during the day and we saw the show at the casino that night. And um. You know, Michael, like, this is so 70s, we got to do this. And it was like him, Ambrosia, like all these 70s bands where it's like, oh, my gosh, we're old. But, you know, then we saw this shirt. I'm like, this shirt is so ridiculous. Cause, yeah, like the it, baseball jersey It's style. a baseball shirt, but it, it, it and Peter Beckett has, like, one song. But yeah. it's his face and, it, you know, the voice of player. And I was like, I have to have it. And they're like, this is the only medium left. And I'm like, okay, this is – I have to have it. So I saw I've been waiting to like – 77 punk rock. I'm like, yeah, nothing's more punk rock than Peter yeah. Beckett, a player. Let me tell you. I've almost waited a year to, to actually debut this shirt. So uh, I'm glad you're wearing it. I, I, I kind of like geeked out a little bit when I saw you're wearing it. I'm like, I got to segue that in somewhere while right, you're pulling your pack go. out. So uh, shuffling and. What am I going to do with these upper deck cards? God. 13 cards, top chrome. Oh. Ooh. So Uh-oh. this. Oh, this this may bode well or uh, not well for me, depending on uh, what I. Get. I don't think it's gonna bode well for you, sir. You you get two pitchers, you you're out. Unless you get an oh, autograph. Oh, that's true. You're right. Oh boy. But no, if there's an autograph or relic in there, you can knock somebody out. That's true. So uh, I'm I'm going to make you drink with my Lorenzo Kane. Yeah. Uh, Tops Chrome. So there you go, Brewer. 
I, I, it's too bad they don't have him during the playoffs. Yep. Uh, oh, Heimer Candelario. Yep. Still position player. Ah. Uh, no pit. Uh oh. I'm gonna uh, make I you know. drink, but I have Josh Haterade. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that consolation. So prize. that's a, that's a tie. All, All I right, we're one tie. You I'm got done. Eight cards, like what? Eleven cards, twelve cards ago. <laughs> yeah, Max Kepler. These cool. These cards are so cool. That's cool. Okay. That is cool. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Vlad Jr. Ooh, is that a insert or is it just a future stars? Just it's part of the series? a future stars, which is uh, it's, it's part of the regular one, but it's still nice. But still, it's odd. Right on. Now this is awesome. This is a die cut of Willie Whoa. Mays. Wow! Oh my gosh! Now the, these these are a little bit more expensive, but they're super worth it. They're super cool, and you can wow. get a lot of cool things. That's such a cool card, though. Uh, Jordan Alvarez, who I saw Hi. last year at Round Rock, it's it's a rookie yep. card. Uh, it's actually a refract refractor, so this is actually. Um, oh my gosh! Yeah. What the hell actually, have you got there, sir? Yeah. So if you look right in the where it says two hundred, it says refractor. Woo! Um, yeah, so that the refractors are are uh, pretty. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. the money. Uh, this guy, you may remember <laughs> him from uh, such hits as Bang Bang. <laughs> bang Bang. Okay. Um, I, I by the way, I I actually want to drop this this year because, uh -oh. um, I I I I want the ask. I, we eventually have to get past all this stuff, right? But we have to let's beat them up for this year, and let's like let let's not talk about it anymore. Michael, I think we need to do one show of yeah. you just getting it out of your system on on you about the Astros. I'm not gonna say anything more than that because you have a you have a unique I have a unique I have a unique take on their cheating. Yeah. So I I definitely yes. want to talk about it. I would I love to have that show. show. I will. That, I, will I, I would think love to have that. that. It's, 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 like contra it's there, controversial. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Raphael Devers. Yeah. How do you have one? And you only have one pitcher so far. Great. I do. Look at this. You got a so far. And uh, Freddie Freeman in the, oh my God, that, that throwback. 70s that's, uni. Oh, that's great. So cool. That is incredible. I'll, I'll, I'll give this to, one to you, John. We'll see how the all-star, we'll see how the all-star game uniforms coming up. You know, look like, hopefully yeah, they have some throwbacks. Nicky Lopez, that's a cool card. Yeah, these are all really nice. My guy, Paul Goldschmidt, and I have one card left. Oh, no. Ugh. One uh -oh. card left. It's going to come down uh -oh. to this. All Angels Podcast say, I want to be on that show. You are on that show. Oh, I can't wait. Heck. I can't wait to debate. It's, uh, it's, it's, the the great baseball to debate. debate. I can't wait to do the great baseball debate. We should definitely. That should be, that should be our first show of our new show. Can you make me moderator? <laughs> yes. I hope I have a, I, I've got a neutral on this. What do you got? All right. So the last card, and it is a loser. I have a uh, a gold Lucas oh. Giolito. So that's... a great card. It's a gold wow. card. You can't really tell right this one. Um, you got some money in that pack, man. Yeah, that is a, it is a loser. Pack. It loses me today. I'm 0 and 4. <laughs> Whatever, man. You know what? Just think of this. I only gained two points on you, technically. You know, just think of him that way. That's not like we're getting a grand prize at the end. You know, it's all it's all. <laughs> good yeah, we'll just keep on playing. It's bragging rights, and because that's what I'm all about is going is getting over on you. Obviously, <laughs> the Sorry, John, you get over on Michael. You're just here. You know, the stipulation bit you, Kevin. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. It did, and that happened I because. Pulled that package line. Oh my god, that's what I pulled. That's all right. It's all good fun. What was the one we picked? Uh, like first baseman or something like that. And there was only one first baseman out of all our packs. No, catchers. Catchers. That was it. That was it. We did catchers. I'm like, are you sure you want to do catchers? And we all went through it, and you know, Michael and Angela get one, and I got one. I was last hope, luckily, and I got one for the walk off. Austin Barnes for the walk off. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that was a very spirited round. I love it. I love playing that so much. It uh, never disappoints. Let it, let's go to our baseball All trivia. Right. This will end out the show. Let's test your knowledge of baseball. Yeah, I want to see how so, John does with this. Yes. I'm curious. So, so this is a us. game of Who Am I from the book 
Baseball's Best 1000, The Greatest Players of All Time by Derek Gentile. So these are the teams that this player played for, the Giants, the Rangers, the Cardinals. He is a six-time All-Star silver medal for the 84 Olympics. Mm. NLCS MVP in 89. (laughs) Gold Glove uh, Award winner in 91. Two-time Silver Slugger Award and NL. RBI leader in 1988, born in New Orleans, Louisiana. Yeah. Wow, Kevin's very confident. So it, it took me a minute. I was like, "Who is this man?" Like when you said silver, when you said the Olympics, I'm like, "I know what it is." You, you're very on top of the Olympics. Whenever I mention anybody who's on the Olympics, you you seem to know. Well, I, I remember the '84 and '88 teams pretty well. You know, okay. yeah, I tied that in with a certain team because he's most no. I like I don't even remember this guy being on the Cardinals or the Orioles. I forgot this guy's on the Rangers. You know, I, you met, you will know this guy for the Giants. If you're, I have, if I have a hunch. Hunch. I have a hunch. I have a hunch as well who it is. What? Let's, I have a hunch as well who it is. Okay, so let, let's see. Uh, anybody in the comments? Uh, yeah. You have any guesses out there? Uh, so, uh, John and Kevin are pretty uh, are pretty confident in their picks. Uh, I don't see. Yeah. Now I saw where he was born. I'm like, oh yeah. I was trying to remember if he went to LSU. I'm trying to remember if he did. Yeah. So no one's chiming in. Uh, so, John, uh, go for it. I think I'm going to say Will Clark. Can I step in? Yeah. Will the Thrill Clark. Will the, okay. 100%. 145. Look at this guy. Yeah. So wow. he was ranked very high uh, in this, uh, although he will not be a uh, Hall of Famer. Uh, a, a great batting average, uh, 2000, 2000 hits. hits. Yeah. Yeah. Almost 300 home runs, RBIs. Uh, I think injuries, uh, definitely, uh, played a part. Uh, he was drafted he still uh, like 14, 15 years. So good for him. You know. Yeah. Drafted second overall pick, uh, by the giants in eight eighty five. his first major league at bat. Uh, he hit a home run off Nolan Ryan, which I didn't know. I didn't know either. Wow. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Those are pretty good stats overall. I didn't think it was, uh, especially the batting average. Over yeah, no, he, he has more for average than home runs. Yeah. I mean, those are, and, you know, it's more the RBIs. And like, you can tell, like, he was a good hitter, but not like a power hitter, because that's a lot of RBIs, you know, over a thousand. Yeah. And, and then you see, like, 93 home runs. It's like, eh, he's more think, of like an alley hitter, probably. You know what I mean? What cued me the most was the years played for the Giants. And I think yeah. I remember I remember reading about the '84 Olympics statistic a while back, so that that yeah. cued me the most. Uh, oh, and here's something, and I don't know if it happened. He was supposed to have his uniform number retired by the Giants this this, this season, year. right? Yeah, and he is in the National College Baseball Hall of Fame, and he where right. he went there in Mississippi State. Yep, yep, great player. Uh, w- when he was with the Orioles, uh, and. and uh, he- I th- yeah, just or he had like really terrible seasons only because he was hurt so much. He actually, uh, I remember him right at the very end. He had like a great uh, year for the Cardinals that year, and that kind of really? got them back. Wow. Yeah, right. he had a great season. Like it was like him and Gary Gaetti. They they had like the reputation for like yeah, totally for like reviving yeah, players' yeah. careers right at the very end. Um, uh, uh, Lance Berkman is another example of that. Yeah, they always take ch- uh, chances. Uh, um, uh, Carlos Beltran, another John player. Smoltz, that, John Smoltz finished there. John the Smoltz, perfect example. Yeah, they they always have a, a real good knack about uh, uh, having those players uh, do really well. All right, so th- this is uh, number two. Okay, so I'm I'm not going to give the team the MLB team they play. So I'm going to go with minor league. He played with the Elizabethan Twins as a rookie in the rookie league. Vasilia Oaks, single A, T- Toledo Mudhens, triple A. But he became a 10-time All-Star, two-time World Series champ, six-time Gold Glove Award winner, six-time Silver Slugger Award winner, Roberta Clemente Award winner, AL batting champ, and AL RBI leader. Uh, uh, and I, I won't give the years that might give it away. Born yeah. in Chicago, Illinois. Who is it, John Talwar? <laughs> Boy, yeah, I was like, it's like wait, what? <laughs> so, if I were to give you the team, you would have known in a second. Well, sorry, I won't say anything. 
Kevin, you're good at this because it's, it's all the clues, like you pick out one clue and it's well, like it's done. I mean, I'll, I'll save it. I'll say if it's who I think it is, I'll, I'll wait because I want to okay. say if I say it now, it'll give it away to John. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and limb and say Wade Boggs. Oh, good guess. Good guess. It's a little yeah. Unfortunately, Wade Boggs played for Pawtucket and Triple A because that's the Pawtucket Red Sox. Yeah. I never knew Toledo being tight end, but the the the, the hint you gave away was you put the T name for Elizabethton. Yeah, you put, you put the twins in there, you know, and I'm like, and I know Visalia, and I'm like, I know what this is because I know playing Visalia, the most well-known Visalia Oak, and two-time World Series champion, which is the sore subject with John Tallward. 1991 was the year this team won. Who beat the Braves in 1991, John? Uh, no comment. So, you know what this is? It's either Paul Molitor or uh, Kirby Puckett. It's Kirby Puckett. Okay. Yeah, that is it. That is uh, it. I should, I should have been included into the twins. Yep. Okay. But th that's why I didn't want to say it. If I was at the twins thing, it might have gave it away. Yeah, he only played so, for one team. So those, uh, those are kind of comparable stats to not far off from Will Clark. Well, it's funny because uh, Will Clark was 145 and Kirby Puckett 146 in this book. But so, look at the difference. Kirby, first year Hall of Famer. First year. Yep. I mean, it's partially because his career got cut short and everything that happened with him. I'm guessing that's yeah. why he got in. You know, but yep. for those people, like winning a championship means something for the Hall of Fame, you know? It really does. Yeah. I'm no amazing player. Nothing, no credit taken away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Both of them amazing. Will Clark and him. And I, yeah, and I didn't know this, that David Ortiz uh, stated his number 34 was to honor uh, Puckett's friendship with him. Mm. So remember, uh, David Arias, uh, that's David Arias to you, uh, not David <laughs> Ortiz. He actually started as David Arias uh, with the uh, Minnesota Twins. Wow. Uh, yeah, so I didn't even realize that he uh, yeah, came up. Uh, wow, so that was rookie. Because Kirby went at the eye thing in, what, 96-ish? Yes, yes. Yeah, and oh gosh, I don't remember when was he even alive by the time he made the Hall of Fame in two thousand one. No, I think he died yeah. before. I think that's why he made it in so so easily. Yeah. You know, first ballot Hall of Famer, you would not look at that stats and everything. First ballot Hall of Famer, unless it's like a Sandy Kopax, who again career cut short. But like if a Roberto Clemente already had the stats, he's going to go in no matter what. But you look at these stats, you'd be like, help a player, but like no Hall of Famer, but. You know, circumstances say otherwise. You know. Yeah, I think is a bit like uh, like Roy Halladay. You know, it's like they, yes. they didn't question the stats. I mean, he died, and and so like they definitely wanted to honor him and and what he gave to the game and stuff like that. So I mean, I, I have no trouble with this. And yeah, uh, great play. Actually, Kirby died in two thousand six. Oh, I thought, I, I thought it was I thought it was a lot earlier. But he was still only forty five when he died. You know, forty five. I mean, still. And yeah, and he he kind of ran into some uh, trouble at the end. I know that he has some uh, domestic uh, abuse uh, things that got yeah, on. Yeah, he had so to retire at thirty six due to loss of vision in an eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty six. I mean, that's why. Because if it's not, if this was okay, he would have played another at least four or five years. You know what I mean? He probably would have oh, yeah. got three thousand hits if he would have played another few more years. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's Dale Murphy oh. doing? Hall of Fame now. Yeah, we need to get Dale Murphy in there. That's the, that's the shirt I'm wearing, actually. Dale Murphy. Right, right, there we go. Yep. Well, nicely done. So that is the show that we had for you today. Uh, I definitely wanted to uh, say to everybody, thank you for joining us again. 20, uh, well, 23 weeks, but this is our 22nd episode. We had a pilot episode. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this has been a, a great journey, and uh, we're looking forward to Angelo ha having Angelo back. But thank you, John, for stepping in and uh, uh, flawlessly, as always. We, we always love when you come on. You offer so much uh, baseball knowledge, and uh, we really appreciate it. Did you have anything that you wanted to plug? Uh, no, just uh, the show. It's, uh, it's, I, you know, I watch it uh, along uh, with everyone else every week, and I always enjoy it. Why don't you plug the Braves? Come on. Your team's in the playoffs. Come on. I, I'm I'm not uh, getting my hopes up. It's been since <laughs> it's been since 2001 since we've actually won. You're, 
playoff You're series. You're saying that like a true Braves fan, so I appreciate that. You know, yeah, two thousand one since we won the playoff series, so not getting my hopes up. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the fun of this, and uh, with you know the the wild card round th- this year, I mean, like anything is possible. I mean, like I. Yeah, we have to lament that the Astros won today. So it's like, you know, it's like anything's possible. Um, and uh, with with all these wild cards, I mean, in a three game series, anything can happen. Oh my gosh. So, so, yeah, this yeah. is what I imagine, like, you know, the, gosh, I mean, like in the 80s, you know, that the, 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 the championship series would be three out of five. It's like, what? You know what I mean? It's, right, right. You have two bad games and you're done. You know? Yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah, the travel wasn't what it used to be. TV didn't yep. be, used to be what it used to be. So, um, yeah, cool. Uh, Kevin, uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, I mean, if you want to follow me uh, on Instagram and Twitter, you can find me at Lock and Mole. That's L-O-K-N-L-O-L-L. Or, as I pretty much say every week, you like beer, support your local independent brewery. We want them to stick around after this. If you like a baseball team, try to support their minor league team. The major league teams, they're going to be around. We want these minor league teams to stick around. You know, like today I got the Burlington Bees, you know, and just we want to support our – we want these teams to be around. Absolutely. And, it's, uh, it, they're not, it's not only just for themselves, but that whole community. Like this is the Burlington Bees. Like what's – you know, it that Bees being there is a big part of Burlington, Iowa. You know, I'm sure, you know, it affects that whole economy. Well, I went there last year, and I can that's tell you it. in Burlington. Yeah, I, that's right. I got you that shirt there because it's an Angels affiliate. Yes. So I went there. Uh, who did I see there? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm forgetting who I, I saw. Um, uh, actually, it was the son of a former ball player, which I'm, I'm spacing on right now. But uh, let me tell you, there is nothing going on in Burlington, Iowa, except for the <laughs> Burlington Bees. <laughs> so... Um, uh, I don't know what minor leagues are going to be next year. Yeah. Uh, I will be surprised uh, at it. And did you see that there was news of the Frontier League being a major league baseball affiliated? Wow. No, the Frontier, I didn't. The Frontier League is a league that was associated with the uh, team or the, the league that we watch in Palm Springs, yep. the California Winter League. They actually have an associated with them. Now they're they're Major League Baseball affiliated, which means I think that they're going to do oh, like gosh. experimental rules and different types of things that they're going to uh, like. I so remember a guinea the, pig, a guinea pig league. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so they have like things like uh, they experiment with like a bigger base, or um, one of the things that they were going to do is like like uh, one of the rules that they were trying to implement was, was like stealing first base. So, for instance, if you have a one zero count and somebody like bounces a pitch you could actually run to first base. So you oh essentially gosh. have stolen first base. So they were experimenting with those rules. Um, and then the Frontier League was associated with that. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited about it, but I'm also like trepidatious, like what teams are not going to be there, what cities are not going to be included in this. So, um, so definitely find your minor league baseball affiliates of the teams that you love. Yep. Uh, and and just buy a hat, buy a shirt, do it, do what you can to support. And, um, and I know John has the Gwinnett yeah. Braves um, yeah. hats and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So he supports his Braves. And if anything, like if, if you want, I mean, depending on where you live, you might have a team that's not that far from you either. You know, 